GCSE question of the week, week 16. Okay, essential for year 11s, getting ready for mocks. Okay, foundation, write 54 as the product of its prime factors. So we've covered these before. Product, okay, it means a multiply. Prime, exactly two factors. And factor, okay, a number that's divisible into another number. Fits into another number. Factor fits. Okay, so we've got to write 54 as the product of its five prime factors. Easy. Put 54 at the top, at the top and we start a tree. Okay, is it even? Yep. Can I divide it by two? Yep. Let's put a two there. Is two prime? Yep. Okay, right. Two times what makes 54? So 27. Okay, it's 27 prime. No. Okay, can I divide it by two? No, it's not even. Can I divide it by three? Yes. 3 times what makes 27? 3 times 9 makes 27. Is 3 prime? Yes, let's ring it. Is 9 prime? No. What can I divide 9 by? I can divide it by 3. 3 times what makes 9? 3 times 3 makes 9. Is 3 prime? Yes. Is 3 prime? Yes. Okay, if you leave that as your answer, you've lost one mark. Okay, it's all correct. But write 54 as the product of its prime factors. Well, we better put 54 equals 54 is the product of its prime factors well its prime factors are 2 3 3 and 3 i've listed them okay i've not expressed them as a product timesing of its prime factors now we get full marks so 54 equals 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 does make 54 or we could put 2 times 3 cubed. Okay, that's a full mark answer. So we need the tree, but then we need to write 54 equals 2 times 3 cubed, or 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. No excuse for getting those wrong. Right, number 2, equally no excuse for getting these wrong. You've got to know how to multiply fractions and how to add or subtract fractions. And divide fractions, although it's not on here. So multiply, it's the easy one. As soon as you see times between some fractions, times, 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 times the top, times the bottoms. That's all you do. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. So you've got to learn that rule. Okay, this one's going to be 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 8 is 24. It's 3 24ths. If you were asked to simplify that, we could have 1 8. Okay, so 3 eighths times 1 third, 3 twenty fourths, or 1 eighth, times the tops, times the bottoms. Not guess, not think, oh, is this the one word? You've got to know. Multiply fractions, times tops, times bottoms. Okay, right, add fractions, right. This is not so easy. If it said 3 eighths plus 2 eighths, easy. 3 eighths, give me another 2 eighths, I've got 5 eighths. Don't change the denominator, just add up the numerators. Trouble here is we don't have the same denominators. So if we've got to add fractions, first thing to check is are the denominators the same? If they're not the same, you've got to make them the same. Okay, so to do that, we can multiply the 8 and the 3, and that'll give us 24. Right, that method will always work. It will always give you a multiple of the bottom numbers. Okay, it's not always the lowest common multiple. So if you can spot a lower common multiple, um, and that's the best thing to do. Here, 24 is the lowest common multiple. So we're going to change 3 eighths into 24 fourths. Okay, so what did I do to the 8? To get to 24, I multiplied by 3. What do we do to the 3? I multiplied by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 eighths is the same as 9 24 fourths. Okay, what are we then going to do to the one third? Wow, what did I do to the three to get to 24? I multiplied by eight. What am I going to do to the one? I'm going to multiply by eight. And one times eight is eight. So we get eight twenty-fourths. Let's put that back in red. We've got eight twenty-fourths. Okay, so three eighths becomes nine twenty-fourths. One third becomes eight twenty-fourths. And now it's a simple case where well, we've got the same denominator, so I just add the numerators. Give me 9 24ths, give me another 8 24ths, what do we got? We got 17 24ths. 
Okay, and we can't simplify this one, so we're done. 17 24 Right, two and three look almost identical on the page. Three eighths times one third, three eighths plus one third. You can't get into the exam and be guessing which one's the times tops, times bottoms, which one's the oh, is this the one where we're going to change the denominators? You need to know. Okay, make sure you learn it. Right, number four. Number four is the hardest one on the page. Here are two fractions, seven eighths and eight sevenths. Work out which one is closer to one, you must show you're working. Right, so these are not easy fractions to know. It's not like three quarters that we know is 0 0.75. So you've got to work out what these fractions are as decimals. So how do we convert from fractions to decimals? We do what it says. 7 eighths means 7 divided by 8. So let's do it. Let's use a non-calculator method to do 7 divided by 8. So 7 divided by 8. How many 8's go into 7? None. Put a point, put a point, put a 0, carry that 7, because we didn't use any of it up. Okay, how many 8's go into 70? Well, 8 eight's are 64. Don't think we can get any more out, so let's put an 8. Okay, when we did 8, 8 to 64, did we use up all the 70? No. How much was left when we took out 64? 6. So let's put another 0. Carry a 6 on. Okay, how many 8s in 60? Well, this time I think we can take 7 8s out. Okay, what are 7 8s or 8 7s? We've got 56. Okay, so if we get 56, what do we have left of our 60? We've got 4 left. Okay, how many 8s into 40? Oh, thank goodness. 5 8s make 40. There's nothing left to carry. So 7 eighths is equal to exactly 0 0.875. So that's that one done in blue. Okay, let's go to red. And we'll do 8 sevenths. How do we do 8 sevenths? Well, 8 sevenths is telling us what to do. It says 8 divided by 7. So let's do it. We want 8 divided by 7. Alright, how many 7s into 8? I think I can fit 1. Put a point, put a point, put a 0. Right, when we took 1 7 out of the 8, what do we got left? Just 1. Carry the 1. How many 7s into 10? Just 1. Okay, when I took 1 7 out of 10, what do we have left? 3. How many 7s into 30? I think we can do four. Four sevens are 28. What do we get left? Two. Sevens into 20. Two. Okay, two sevens are 14. What do we get left? Six. Sevens into 60. Right, I'm bored now. Okay, we can keep going. But I'm not sure we need to go any further. Actually, we can put another one. It's going to be eight. Okay, so we could keep going. We're not yet done. Okay, this one's not done yet. Um, so we know that 8 sevenths is roughly equal to 1.1428. Right, so we know what both of those fractions are as decimals. Work out which is closer to 1. Okay, well, how are we going to do that? 7 eighths, it looks like, is a bit less than 1. How much less than 1? Okay, well, we need to do 1 take away 0.875 and we can do that with some column subtraction 1 take away 0.875 scare rid of that it's in the way oh okay right we've got a fair bit of borrowing to do we're going to make that zero we're going to make that 10. We're going to make that 9. We're going to make that 10. We're going to make that 9. We're going to make that 10. Right, 10 degree 5, that's 5. 9 degree 7, that's 2. 10 degree 8, that's 1. Okay, now you might have been able to see, to see that answer in your head. Okay, 0 0.875 from 1. What have we got left to make up the 1? We're going to need 0 0.125. Okay, so 7 eighths is 0 0.125 smaller than 1. 
What about 1.1428? I should have done that last bit in blue, sorry. 1.1428. Well, that's clearly more than one. How much more than one? Well, it's 0.1428 more than one. So now we just need to decide. That was the red one. Wasn't it? But now we just need to decide which of these two, 0.125 or 0.1428, is the bigger number. That's going to be the furthest one from one. Okay, and which is the smaller number? That's going to be the one that's closest to one. Well, I think this one here, the 0.125, is the smaller number. That's less than 0.1428. In other words, it's closer to one. That difference was closer to one. So which one gave us that? Um, I stupidly put it in red, didn't I? That was the 7 eighths. Okay, so 7 eighths was 0.875. That was only a 0.125 away from 1. So this one is the closest to 1, 7 eighths. Okay, that was by far the trickiest on those questions. If you got 7 eighths and you followed that reasoning, you could do it on your own. Well done. There's something similar on the mug exam.